<laughs> and usually you get about 10 minutes extra <laughs> depending on the lineup all right extend the legs never mind enough of that <laughs> okay sit up nice and straight relax remember you want to pull the head from above so the chin will tilt down the head will tuck back and relax you also have to practice letting go so while the legs are out here are you holding the knees up or are you checking that you're relaxing letting them fall can you feel the thigh muscle stretching out a little bit and then relax the hip joint as it stretches out if you think of your spine you think from the tailbone all the way up can you start feeling your spine and you feel each part of your spine right wherever you think about you want to feel that you feel any tension up here in your chest in your face you let it go if you feel yourself letting it go and feel the muscles falling So on the physical side, soon relaxing is number one. Just letting everything go. Imagine the top of your head open. Imagine just a little cloud, a swirl of cloud connecting way above. Right? And this energy is moving in and out of the top of your head, way up in the sky. And that energy can run right through the body right down past the tailbone some of it can flow through the legs into the earth some of it just flows right down into the earth right. again you listen for any tension with your legs out if it's getting tired that means you're holding you're tight tightening trying to hold up the legs so just let them fall and and learn to relax let the spine expand just breathe. Open the throat. Any distractions, acknowledge it. Slowly walk your feet back. Just where they find the ground. <clears throat> Make any adjustments you need to. Drop your shoulders and bring your hands up, breathing in. Slowly feel the shoulder blades swiveling up. Feel the fingertips start to stretch and expand, gathering from way above. Relax the wrist. And with your fingers, direct that energy and that cloud down through your body. <clears throat> through the hips, through the legs, into the earth. As you come down to the feet, gently press the bottom of your feet into the earth and gently hold it, hold it there. Relaxing the joints so you can feel your legs expanding into the earth. Breathe in when you come up and exhale when you come down. When you see imagination and visualize, you're gathering up this clean, clean energy. Doesn't matter the color, it can be white, red or violet violet is a high vibration keep the throat open feel the lower belly expand and contract while the shoulders and the chest relax breathe in from the earth feel the feet sinking while you pull the chi up through the legs, through the tailbone, through the spine, washing, cleaning, moving the blood, moving the chi. As you come up, expanding the joints, gently stretching the joints. As you come through the spine, imagine the spine opening up, releasing the nerves. Allow a lot of space in your body. Allow the nerves and the, and the veins to stretch a little bit and straighten out so the blood in the cheek can move and flow. 
Focus in the bones. Pull the chi up through the bones. Imagine the blood flowing through the bones, stimulating the bone marrow. Every bone of your body, the toes, the ankles, the legs, the kneecap, the hips, the tailbone, every vertebrae, the rib cage, the shoulders, the arms, the skull, the jaw. Stimulate every bone in your body, every cell in your body. Put your body into a state of self-healing. When you exhale, come up from the side. When you exhale, exhale all that exhaust in your body. Breathing in, eyes looking far away. Imagine you staring out at the mountain top. No. Yeah, you fall asleep in my class, it's okay. <clears throat> I don't care if you fall asleep because my stories are boring, my, my voice puts you to sleep, or it's just soothing. Yeah? Yeah, everybody, gets, everybody gets that gentle relief. Yeah? Breathing in. Deep breath and squeeze all that energy through every muscle of your body, every cell. Squeeze it out. Slowly let it go. And focus in the bone. Imagine you squeezing and wringing out every bone of your body. And slowly let it go. Oh, how did that come out? <laughs> Ligaments and tendons. everything back and down and gently feel every joint relax but expand remember the chin is down a little bit as the head is being gently pulled up suspending the body and the hips are expanding put your mind really deep right in that hip joint Think of inside the joint, relax that, and feel the legs expanding. Okay. Try to hold that there. Gently hold it. Oh, the last one, heart. So energy. So physically, relax is number one. Soon. Right? Energetically, heart is number one. Right? So relax. Let the physical go. That feeling of smiling right in the chest and that little sun in there warm and cool and that smile and you project that smile and you can practice projecting that smile out through the palms if you want yeah. so take a deep breath let it all out and then begin take a nice large palm open the fingers just stretching from the fingertips washing relaxing a little bit Stir them up, right when you feel it fill, start coming down, just ahead. Just want to warm up the neck. Or we want to, we want to prioritize the neck because it's gently pulling on the rest of the spine as your head falls. And obviously we're warming up the shoulder and the wrist a little bit and we're stretching the fingertips, breathing in. Just open your throat when you breathe. Just feel, feel your stomach expand. Expand your fingers. Washing. Tilt the sternum up. That full feeling. Reaching, extending as you come up. Exhale, and down. Number two, looking to the side, and relax both arms, breathing in. Finish the breath, and out, 
bottom hand comes in and stretch the fingertips. Relax all the joints, but stretch the fingertips. Remember, go at your own speed, your own pace. Follow your palm. And then slowly start looking through the fingers so you can stare. You can stare out at the mountain top, at the horizon. And see if you can feel the warmth of the palm washing through the forearm. Okay, come back to center when you're done, height of throat. Stir them up. Just one time. <clears throat> okay, shoulders. Squeeze the scapula, fold the arms. Imagine you can make the scapula touch each other and then pull them up and over. Stretch, stretch, stretch. And feel those muscles under the shoulder blades squeezing and stretching. Check that your feet are still reaching into the earth. And try to hold the knees straight, lined up with your foot. And so just get that general correction. Okay, come forward. And breathe. Turn the palms forward first, then up, and then squeeze all the way down. Relax a little bit and do one side. And the arm that's not doing it, it's relaxed, but the fingers are still open. Feel the shoulder blades move and squeeze. Just pivot the arm, pivot the palm against the body. Relax the neck, relax the waist so it follows. And then come forward. your mind inside your shoulder blades. Feel what's going on inside of your shoulder blades. All the way down, relax and do the other side. training it's about the quality the quality of what you're doing you still need to do it a thousand times <laughs> relax <coughs> but it's better if you do one quality movement rather than a, a hundred to a thousand mindless movements yeah. relax can lose circles. You do a thousand movements, you get tracked into that movement, right? So if you do a thousand times wrong, oh, that's, you're doing it perfectly wrong. <laughs> if you do one time perfect, right, then you feel that and you're like, oh, it's different. Right? And that becomes the, your standard. Okay, slow it down. Again, relax, breathe in. And out. 
Make your shoulder joints, make all the joints as light as possible, stretching the fingers and exhaling and rotating the palms the entire time. And put your mind on your shoulder blade. That's what's doing the movement. And you put your mind on your fingertip stretching. And then you relax all the joints so you can turn. And you look straight ahead. Make sure the elbow folds. And same thing, all the joints are light, light, light. And if you take your time, you're going to you probably naturally breathe in as you come up and exhale as you come down. The, the timing just comes out naturally. And relax. Let all the tension go first. Still holding the feet into the earth. Okay, then hold the ball. We move to the spine. One hand, one hand up, one hand down. Okay. Remember, let the wrists go. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't want this kind of movement for this training. I'd like you to relax and then stretch the bottom hand. You feel everything line up. And imagine cables coming out of the fingertips, and those cables are going into the earth, and you can feel them pulling and pulling. Imagine those cables are pulling and pulling the fingers. And strong, strong, strong. So your fingers start stretching out. Relax the wrist and the upper hand, same thing. Cables coming out of the fingertips up into the sky, They're plugged into the sky and it's pulling and pulling and pulling each one. So, the, so it's large and you have to relax all the joints. Every time you relax, right, they'll straighten out, they'll straighten out your arms and the fingers and the elbows. And you allow the shoulder blade to stretch and relax. And just those finger, those cables pulling, pulling, pulling. Okay. You can feel them pulling the fingers. Take a deep breath. And as you exhale, just slowly switch. And you can feel the direction of the cable switching. Okay. Keep the elbows bent. And they're right in the center. And they're pulling. Let the wrist go. Let those cables straighten out all the joints and feel the spine expanding. Just feel those fingertips being pulled, pulled by the cables, really strong, but just the fingertips. The deep breath and the exhale. Right where they pass the heart, start breathing in. Finish your breath before you exhale. Let the spine expand. Relax the lumbar, relax the thorax, the mid spine. And just take your time, go at your own speed. You want to hold it a little bit longer and take a few more breaths because you're getting a nice stretch. Just go ahead. You want to pause and reset your breath? Go ahead. Listen to your body, listen to the spine. So you listen and make the move work for you. Sometimes you can hold that stretch and just keep breathing and you hold and when you're ready, you switch. And you take your time when you have time. And remember, it's the quality of the movement. It's the quality of the breath. Sometimes when you just hold that movement, you have time to, to check your whole body and relax the whole body and then you switch. So just go at your own speed. Okay, turn the palm, drop the elbow and turn the body. You have to turn the body and drop and then wash the outside. And turn, 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 lift right about the forehead. The other one falls. It's right under the elbow. And really tight spiral. And relax 
the shoulder joints and allow everything to spin while you breathe in. And when you're ready to exhale, come back. Keep the fingers stretched. The fingers are still being pulled out. Just the direction of the cable changes. So release all the joints. The fingers can continue to expand and they can start to spiral and twist. But they're still stretching out. The exhale as you unwind. And breathe in as you wind up and exhale as you unwind and release and then breathe in so turn start to turn the waist turn the spine feel the muscles just grab the spine pulls it in one direction and releases and it pulls it in the other direction and it releases the fingertips are being pulled and stretched just go at your own your own pace. Come back to center when you're done. Height of the heart. Drop your shoulders, drop the elbows. Tilt the sternum up. Three times. It's smiling from the heart. The face is relaxed. That little sun is powered by the sun in the sky. Turn the palms up and down and keep on turning towards the upper palm. Drop the shoulders, drop the elbows. As deep a breath as you can. When you're ready to release, just let the body spring back to center and then grab that spine and twist the other way. Check that your feet are still expanding into the earth, the bottom of the feet relaxed. If you want to work on releasing every joint in the movement, you have to take your time. And every time you do the movement, you might think of a different joint. But if you rush through the movement, right, you cannot study it. And you cannot appreciate what you're doing. And you cannot appreciate what you've been already developed. So you have to relax. One more time. And last time the other way, and then you come back, come back to the solar plex. Tilt the sternum up. You do the solar plex and create that wedge. And you put that point really far away, just extend it way, way out. And then nothing can penetrate that wedge, it just gets deflected. Okay, and then out, finish your movement, and down. Press both feet into the earth, and then sink into one hip. So one leg releases, <clears throat> feel the upper body relax, let the hands go. Yeah. Press both feet and then let them go. Just let them rest. Right? No intention in the legs. Just resting. Just the palms pulling. Just like a vacuum drawing straight up. And as you exhale, sink. Gently pump that energy back into the earth. Just feel the legs resting. So that when your hand draws and pulls that energy up. See if you can gently detect that your legs start, your legs are being pulled into the earth. And when you pump the energy back into the earth, see if you can feel that small little change when your legs release. And so you're drawing and pulling, the legs get pulled down naturally. As you exhale and pump the chi back into the earth, your legs release. Okay. We're displacing the energy from, from the earth. So when you pull it up, right, that earth energy has to sink down to replace it. So it's going to pull your legs down because your legs are just resting. When you pump the chi back into the earth, and it's going to pump the chi back up. So it's going to release the legs. Okay? But if you start pressing, you press both feet, relax the hip, 
and just press both feet into the earth and now you do that movement you might feel it but probably not because you're using so much force that the the bone and the skeleton the, I'm sorry, the bone and the muscle are surging down the energy is still moving but now the energy is moving like it's moving through a pipe right where that pipe is just sinking down but the energy just runs through yeah. you might feel it a little bit but right? the intent is to push your legs down into the earth and the more you relax that energy will still flow through your legs you sink into one hip so one heel releases and then we begin picking up the other foot is pressing 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 bottom of the foot relaxed and then switch right press and then sink into the hip joint force your upper body to relax force the bottom of your foot to fully connect so the toes have to be down but relaxed don't worry too much about the hand coordination you know, just kind of coordinate with what you're doing your hands move differently from mine just let them move whatever you're thinking right? don't force yourself to match me and listen to your own body open the throat and breathe just breathe naturally yeah. train yourself to press and think really deep into that hip joint all the way into that hip joint and open the throat so you can breathe and step back out and when you come back in then we'll come back to center when you come back to center on this one just bring your palms together hold the ball you think deep, 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 deep in your body, about three inches below your belly button, right in the center. And that's an important energy center. Your lower, they call that the lower Dantian, Dantian or Dantian. Dantian are energy centers. And so if you study chakra, chakras are all Dantian. And there are a lot of energy centers right in the center of the body. Do one more, breathing in. Turn the palms loose fists, right? and then moving to the knees, pick up one side, so the other leg has to press into the ground, sink into the hip joint, stretch the heel, opposite hand, and then push the knee down, so you stretch the back of the leg, and then lift. Keep the upper body loose, but upright. Push the knee down, and then lift. The next one we're going to pump, we're going to pump the foot out, so heel first, knee, and then pump. And right here you can feel yourself starting to extend and stretch the joints a little bit more. And pick the knee up nice and high to keep, keep all the pressure off the knee. Pump, right, and extend, push the hip out. <laughs> Don't think too hard. <laughs> <laughs> and then turn the waist right? so now the shoulder joint starts expanding and turn back pump and turn the waist relax the shoulder let the shoulders fall yeah. Do one more time like that. when the feet come down just feel it gently pressing on the earth and settling down and pick the knee straight up <coughs> relax come back to center hold the ball height of height of the heart polish the heart reset that thought relax the face sun in the chest fed by the sun in the sky that little sun in here is warm and cool that feeling of smiling that inner smile in here and you hold just hold that ball and you just think of that that little energy and relax right in the center and if you think of that little sun expanding just a little bit 
And slowly you're going to get that little ticklish feeling right around the sternum. That's that heart energy. Yeah. Okay. Sink into one hip so one leg comes up and we finish with the ankles. Okay. And press that other leg down, but relax the very bottom of the foot. And sink into that hip joint as you're pressing that leg down. See if you can get that other leg to totally release. So when you pick it up, it just bounces up. Okay, and switch when you're ready. Right, so press and then sink into the hip joint. Keep the upper body upright. Yeah, there's so many little things you can enhance and correct in the form. You just have to take your time. You want to do more repetitions because you're working on something, that's fine. I'm going to switch. You switch when you're ready. Yeah, it's really neat. If you can figure this out, how to sink into that hip joint, the other leg will just release. It'll just become neutrally buoyant. It'll just float. You pick it up, it's just going to bounce up. Yeah. It's like it has a little spring in there. Let it go, check it out, and then pull the heel up, and stretch the bottom. Oh, I gotta take this out. So, so today's prize is um, cup holders from Starbucks. <laughs> Every time I'm doing it right, it's digging into here. Oh, yeah, stretch the toes straight. Pull the heels up, stretch the toes, relax the upper body. Try to isolate just the foot. If it cramps, just shake it out. Right, and start again. Okay, when you do this, ch check this. Are you pulling this up too? Don't pull this up. It's not going to pull up your feet. Just relax that. And pull this. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. Oh my goodness, Monday is May Day, yeah? I didn't even realize it. You know, when I was teaching, when you teach, especially elementary school, like maybe secondary, you know the dates because you're just looking for the days off, yeah? <laughs> but elementary, you're looking for the days off, but you have to celebrate every day off. <laughs> Doesn't matter what the day off is, right? Oh, we're having holiday. Oh, we have to have a, have to have a holiday lesson based on that day. Yeah. It's so sad. I don't know. It's sad to me that, um, yeah, and I get it because I work with the teachers, but the May celebrations in the schools, right? They slowly, just real suddenly, they slowly disappearing. So I thought, wow, it's May Day. And I realized I didn't hear anything from my granddaughter's school. So I asked the teacher, I said, are you guys doing anything? She looked at me like, no. I said, are you alternating years? Because that started, when I started teaching, uh, you calculated like in 1989, I said 30, 40 years ago, right? Just, just in the 90s, the, the teachers, the schools are getting tired. So in the 90s, schools started alternating. Yeah? Let's just do it every other year. And, and it, it, is, it is a lot of hard work. I taught third grade. We taught Maple. Oh, I always wondered, why are, why are you teaching Maple to third graders? The kids are suffering. We're suffering. <laughs> Turn the other way. No, the outside ring. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, it's that kind of performance. Yeah. And you come back thinking, why are, why are we going crazy over this, right? What is education about? The, the, the quality of the performance is too strict. Right? That was, I began to realize, like, this is crazy, right? We're yelling at the kids and they're like, we're just going, we're all going crazy. I mean, it's wonderful that they have the performance, but did we really need to go through all of that? <laughs> Was there really any educational value? Could we spend a few more hours just you know, doing other things? But anyway, yes, so she said, oh, no, we're not alternating. And then the pandemic gave a really good excuse here yeah, to stop doing a lot of annual events and to start them back. 
Yeah, and she's like, I don't know if we're ever going to bring it back. I said, oh, you should bring back something, yeah, because it is special for Hawaii, even if it's small. Yeah. I know, in, you know, Kalihi and Outline, right, they'll, they'll never go away, even if they do every other year, right? It's too important. Yeah, that was, yeah, kind of sad. Oh. I'm hoping I have enough flowers for one Pakalana strand for my granddaughter. Because last year she finally wore more than the lay. Yeah. All right. Oh, let's stand up in the middle. Yeah. So, really focusing on. Um, I'm going back into that joint, right? And that squatting. So, uh, you can stand. On, you can use your chair. Okay, because this is this issue has come up uh, in the last week. Uh, you, okay, I'll, I'll bring this up because it does it no. Yeah, the shoes and yeah, you know, I I spent a lot of physical therapy last year and I had to really look at everything and one of the issues for me and it, it, ironically it's because I was doing so so much chair tai chi right I was neglecting that more physical exercise, yeah, from there. I'm gonna have the nurse check you out, no? <laughs> yeah, but my shoes were wearing unevenly. Yeah. So that uneven wear was, of course, caused, caused by my gait, but then as it wore unevenly, right, it, ex it accentuated that. So, yeah, spend, spend time looking, look, looking at, your shoes and getting those soles, right? If they're wearing now, you know us, right? Hey, your slipper, your slipper get poker, yeah, over here. No, 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 still good. <laughs> you know, long strug, slippers on sale for $3. No, 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 they didn't break. What do you mean? I can, I can see you have toothpick going through the tongue, right? Hey, just, just get new slippers. You like me buy them for you? No, 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 save your money, right? <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> use the chair. Use the chair right now. And basically, I, I want to encourage all of you to practice squatting. Okay? Now, you don't, have, you don't have to squat all the way down like this. And I'll tell you, one year ago, I couldn't do that. Well, I could go down, I couldn't come up. Yeah, yeah I went through a lot of physical therapy last year and to really study what I'm doing. So, I think probably all of that has made me really figure out like how to do it. And the guideline is always, don't let, don't let the knee pass the toe. So, um, let's see, is there a stick around here? Can I, can I borrow the walker? Can I borrow your walker? Okay, thank you. All right, so the guideline, the guideline is don't let the knee pass the toe. Once the knee passes the toe, right, that means you're putting a lot of, a lot of force into the knee joint. Okay? But if you're just trying to do this, right, and you do that, you don't know why it's passing the toe. What am I doing right and what am I doing wrong, right, in the, in the form? So what I'm discovering is really you don't want the knee to pass here. Once it reaches the toe, too late. Once it reaches the toe here, you can feel that little binding. You know, when you're young, maybe you don't notice it. You know, when you're young and you feel tension, you think it's strength, yeah, because you're tensing the muscles. You don't realize you're tensing the muscles because you're trying to hold back that joint from exploding. <laughs> so if you hit about here, right, this is right on top, that's really, that's really the limit you want it to be. So this is an indicator. So you don't think, you don't judge and say, oh, right there, I'm going to stop. Because to hold it there, you're going to suffer because you don't know how to keep it from there. Okay? So, what keeps it from here? Uh, come, if you, you hold, come, just hold that 
they're familiar. So when I when most of us squat, right, we squat like this, right? We're just gonna push out from there. So to keep it from doing that, you have to fold into here. You see how far down? I can get it parallel, but if I, I let my body fold here, and you see it has that gap, okay? Now my weight is shifted to my knees, right? So I have to tilt my whole body forward. Okay? So now it's touching, but what's happening is as I'm shifting my body forward, okay, the, this plumb line, right? I'm tilting my body forward this way. So if you only think that straight can be here, right? Your body can tilt, right? So straight is here, is angled. Okay? So if you, let me hold that for you, right? So as I come down, right, I, I start sitting on my heel, just kind of naturally. So as I come down, I have to shift my body. So I'm flat, right? I come down and I want to keep that flat around here so it comes a little bit forward but like i said actually my body has shifted has angled a little bit i've just kind of rocked and if i allow myself to fold into here it's touching but if i shift my body forward then my spine my center has angled right so there's still a space okay so it's an illusion right if you're only thinking oh you passed your knee no i haven't because i changed the angle right of that of the line my spine is angled right? if i straighten it out then it starts coming back from here right when to come up right so again i don't want to use just my heel right i want to spread that out on the ground so I'll shift forward relax this right uh, i don't want to be obsessed well, i have to be like this just relax and then i can press against the whole ground but it's not pressing against the ground that's how we used to think. Too much energy. It's expanding the hip joint. So toes relax, toes touching, expand the hip joint. Right? And you see this, right? It's, it still bends because I'm relaxed. And then the upper body unfolds from there. So if you can force yourself to really feel inside. Right? Okay, so thank you. Thank you. Okay. So. You use the chair, right? When we're young, it's like, hey, hey, don't help me, right? Oh, I'm going to squat like, oh, I can do it. Help. <laughs> it's not important, right? So use the chair. And you're still feeling for that. And even if it likely rests, don't have to grab hard. But if you just use the chair, it takes enough pressure off. Right, that you can practice this and only go down if you feel the knees hurting it's uncomfortable you stop yeah, and you just let this stick out as you discover how to do this right and feel let the body shift back and forth so it's that nice flat foot and then don't think about pressing against the, the earth think of unfolding this joint okay? but keep your mind in the hip joint and then the body will unfold Right, together. So it's like an accordion. How so, far should your feet be apart? Oh, okay. Yeah, good question. So, you know, the, the, the width will change the exercise a little bit, yeah? But what I would recommend is you go, you go from uh, width of underarm. Width of underarm, if you, swing, if you swing your hands, your hands will just brush the outside. Width of shoulder, if you swing your arms, it'll just hit you know, a little wider. So somewhere right around there, just comfortable stance. Right? Width of underarm, you can feel like it's a little lighter, like, oh, you can, you can just pick up right away. Width of shoulder, that small little, like one inch, right? You can feel, oh, it's more solid. And if you were to walk, oh, you, wait, you have to reset. It's real subtle. So it's somewhere around there, wherever your comfort level is, yeah, from there. Um, I would use the chair. I'm going to encourage you to use the chair because this is a little lower rather than the table. So that, right, if your hands are up here right now, you're trying to learn how to relax this, raising your hands high, 
is going to encourage this to come up. Yeah? So your hands are here and you can just sink. So you just start off slow. Right? Fold into here. Let, let the butt stick out. Go down a little bit and then kind of rock back and forth so you can study where the weight is on your foot. Yeah? And they keep the flat foot. Keep that flat foot. Okay? And just come down where it's comfortable. And while you're studying and holding, you're developing that muscle. Okay? And then expand. Feel the joint expand. Okay? Yeah. From here. And you can experiment. You have to experiment. Okay? From the joint expanding to <coughs> pressing on the ground. So you come down and then you press against the ground and come up. Yeah. And it's kind of like it's stuck. <laughs> right? Yeah. So your ankle is like 45? Is that yeah. Yeah. So, so to let this fold, to give this up, just let the butt stick out. Yeah. And yeah. So the spine, the spine is still straight this way. I've just changed the angle. Yeah. But what's important, what's important is learning how to fold into here, how to give up this joint. Just let that hip joint collapse. Yeah, you just let that hip joint collapse. So you have to feel this hip joint just give up. Right? So the first thing I'm going to do, right, is just relax, relax the ankles and the knees and just, just drop and let my body fold. Right? So from here. So the chair gives me that safety. Right, where I can just study this, right? Yeah. I can just study it from, from here. And then slowly as you figure it out, right, then you can challenge yourself to go a little lower. You keep this folded. Watch the knees. Don't let it don't let it tilt forward. Right? You listen to it. And hundred percent of the time you have to keep your mind right in this hip joint. Yeah. Yeah. So our legs get weaker, right? All of that gets weaker just because we don't, like I said, right? When you baby, you're real physical. Oh my God, our, our almost two-year-old, I have this PVC box that I've had it for years. I built it for the kids. This kid is getting so physical. So she goes on the box last night. This is the first time she did it like this. And then she's shaking it, and then she reaches up. And she's only, she's going to be two in June, June 22nd. And then she pulled herself up. I was like, and she pulled her legs up, and she's holding herself. Just did it by herself, like, ooh. And I'm watching, I said, don't worry, because, you know, when the babies fall, they just, right? But I said, don't worry, because I've got, like, four layers of padding underneath and it's a short fall but you know, I made sure I had another pillow and sure enough one time she fell straight down on her butt just boom okay. so in addition to to all the padding she's got her diaper right so she got extra padding and she just went boom <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, let me let me talk, let me explain dangerous. We're at the Kani Kapila and I'm massaging and I look at this lady who's waiting for her friends and said, Oh my girlfriend would be would be freaking out right now. She said, What? I said maybe he was in his tools, but you know, just diaper, yeah. And he's crawling up that pipe that's going this way and playing with the brother and she's like, Where's the parents? And you're watching, but you could tell this baby is doing it all the time, right? But, ooh, that one was scary. Diaper, diaper, and he's crawling up on everything. And the older brother came down, he was up, and then he came down, and then he helped to guide him. So, you know, that's, that's just kind of how it is, right? <laughs> but, oh, that was scary. Because they do fall. You know? <laughs> so, anyway, I encourage you to, you want to have this squatting kind of exercise back into what you what you do, but if it hurts, you have to stop. It's too much. But the squatting exercise is important, not just for here, right? We have a lot of exercises for here, but this. 
Yeah, my waist size is going down. <laughs> I know, because I'm losing my butt, right? <laughs> but the exercise for the glutes, right, is the squatting motion, right? Wherever, wherever, what angle it is, it's the squatting motion. So if you come down enough, then you feel this stretch, and you can feel it stretching the lumbar. Right? But if, if you're coming forward, then you're hurting the knees. So just resting and... And just slowly, see my toes are coming back, so I have to shift my whole body forward, relax, and then I can come down a little bit more, right? and then I can hold it. Right? I could do an 8 count to a 10 count, right? and then I could go lower or I could come up. You adjust it for what you need. Yeah. But you just, you only do what's comfortable. Right? And the reason why I, I asked, I put you back on the chair on the table. Right? If I come down and I slip, my hands are already lower, it's more relaxed. If I slip, I can, it's easy, right? But can you see it here if I slip? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm, I'm looking at. And I'm looking at that table like, <laughs> like, oh, no. And the chairs, you have to be careful, right? There. Like if you do it on real slippery, if, it's, if you're doing like this, you're sending that energy that way. Right? So close enough, relax enough, right? I can just here and I can practice rocking back and forth. Where's my weight and relaxing? Yeah. So um, you know you have to give yourself permission. I talk about this all the time. You have to give yourself permission to do something. Right? Because if you go to the gym, right? I guarantee you go to the gym. And you just, you just make it real obvious, right? You stand in the middle and, and you start doing like this. Somebody's going to come up. Oh, no, no, you got you to gotta stick your, your hip here and keep your body upright, right? Like, oh, okay. And then they're going to hold your shoulders back. They're going to put in. And you're going to be like this, like. And they're not looking at your knees. So this kind of training, it's slow because we're trying to, we're trying to perfect where the movement comes from. The movement is not, oh, don't let your knees pass your toes. The movement, if you sink into here and then make that correct adjustment and sink into here, don't worry about this, just relax. This, and you notice my knees don't come forward. You know, I'm on my heels, so I shift my whole body, relax my toes, so when I come up, I think of here expanding, and if I need more help, I pull this up. Uh, I'll pull and stretch that up while I expand here. And then these muscles have to work just enough to allow this to expand. But if I'm pressing on the ground, then I'm, I'm forcing energy down, right? Not up. But if I think of expanding, right, just relax, just, just pull this up. And then you can feel the muscles expanding. Right? And relax, the more I relax the bottom of the feet, right? physically, right? physically my feet are not sinking into the ground. Right? Energetically it is. So the bottom is relaxed. So if the muscles are relaxed, then they can expand. But if I'm tensing and pressing down, then actually I'm pulling my body down, right? And I'm tensing my muscles, so I'm fighting myself. Yeah. So as soon as you come down, just let go, relax from here. And then you realize that this posture is fine. Right? But yeah, you can try that. If you have a gym membership, go there and just just be real obvious and, and go by the squat rack and people, all the exercise guys and go like this. Oh, no, 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 come let me, you're going to fall over. <laughs> right? So you have to give yourself permission to train a different way. Right? I remember growing up, right? I'm uh, still, you know, I was born 59. So that's still that era, the movies and things, right? Stick your chest out. Right, the army posters, right? 
that's our concept. When I started to learn Tai Chi, it's round, like what? Concave, like from here, not, not from here. Right? This has its purpose for specific applications, but if I'm rounded, right, everything sinks down and aims towards here. So all that leverage aims here okay, and there. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, remember safety is number one. Right, so you make it comfortable. Right, you take your time. You don't force yourself to go all the way down on the first one. Right, that's that's going to ruin this kind of training. Right? You, you're trying to figure it out and correct your form, and then you go down a little bit more right, and take your time. Right? So, if you're not squatting anyway. Right? And you're only doing this, oh, that's more exercise than you've done probably for the last 20 years, right? <laughs> so you think like, oh, I have to go lower. No, I didn't do that much, right? Because it, it was gentle. You haven't done that for 20 years. The next morning you wake up and you go like, ah, oh, ah, oh, um, can you bring the diaper? What? I can't get out of bed. <laughs> But think about that. Yeah. So even in the chair, right, you have to pump and move this muscle. Right? And that's that's why when, when I do it, I say push the knee down. Right? Pushing the knee down right, is a therapeutic stretch. And so you feel the back of the leg stretch right? and you pull the toe back. So you stretch the Achilles and stretch the calf muscle. Right? And then when you push the toe forward and you turn, or you, you push, then you can feel like, oh, everything wants to open up you. Yeah? You just take your time and gently release. Don't let it snap back. Just gently release. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yes? What if you see that kind of thing? you relax and you really feel your knees are not. You know, oh, wait, say that again? Maybe, you know, we do the bending, right? When we sit down, we go, oh, yeah, then you're like, Oh, the click, yeah, you know, yeah, that, that clicking, some of it is because right, your joint is like this, so the muscles are tight, right, so it's like you don't have that movement, right, but then as you start opening them up and you can get that, that range of motion, there's a point where it's still rubbing, so click, so, but if you stretch, and I've had to do this, I've had trigger finger, woke up in the night screaming, you know, when it first happens and then afterwards I wake up and I recognize what it is, right? So you have to stretch, right? So if it's, especially if this kind of joint, right? You got to stretch, so it releases, right? And then you can relax and come together. Right? But if it's like this and you try to like, oh, just screaming, yes. And if you pull it a little bit, like, oh, it's going and like, ah, and you go a little bit more, click, right? And click. So if you gently expand, right, and then flex, right, you're trying to release that physical lock from there. So sometimes when it clicks, actually that's a good thing because you're creating space, yeah? But you cannot stop right there. You have to study, oh, I'm getting there, I'm getting there, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. Yeah. So some of, that, some of that limited range of motion is just the joint cannot, right, the joint is locked. It's not just that the muscle is short, but the joint just cannot, Right, it's just locked into here, right? Shoulder joint. Um, oh, there, mine just clicked, right? The kneecap, kneecap tight. Yeah. So coming, right, coming here and, and pressing the knee down. So it stretches, yeah. And then turning and reaching right? and gently letting it come back, yeah. Just gently letting it pull back. So at least three repetitions, it's always at least three repetitions, just to kind of warm up. You know, and then it's more like six to eight repetitions to start building that muscle memory and retoning the muscles, mm -hmm. ligaments and tendons from there. Oh, so hot now. <laughs> you know, it's funny. How many, how many of you practice Lomi Lomi? And you do Lomi for if you do one session lomi, right, and you're really into it, right, and you just it, internal, yeah, and you just want to do it, 
you just, you know, it's like, oh, you get hungry, yeah? Right? No, but you can feel like, wow, oh, just, and you eat, and you're like, oh, I got to eat more. Right? So when you run energy through your body, right, electricity, it's just burning calories, yeah? you don't realize it. Yeah. So like yesterday, the things I was doing yesterday, I went home last night and I'm eating, I'm like, <sighs> and I know I got to stop because physically I only have so much capacity nowadays, but wow, and I realized, oh yeah, I did, I did class and then I did treatment and, and then the treatment, I did energy work. Yeah. When, when I learned in the school and we took Lomi, I think Lomi was one week and I'm just, well, it wasn't, well, it was okay technique, wasn't even that real long form technique, but I'm just pouring myself here yeah, into it. And every day, like, okay, let's go eat lunch <laughs> for one week. Like, how come I'm so hungry? You know, yeah, I'm just burning energy. Yeah. yeah. Okay, kind of loosen everything up, reset, forget everything I said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you already did? Oh, okay, you all get A's. <laughs> yeah. Okay, extend the feet out and just slowly walk it back. Just find that perfect place. Open the throat, relax. Just put your mind far away. Look at that mountain top. You pull the chin back as you're pulling and suspending. Relax the shoulders. Slowly start opening the palms, expanding. The more you stretch your fingers, the more relaxed your shoulders have to be. The more relaxed the elbows and the wrists have to be. And just stretch them enough so you can feel them just kind of pulling back. And you, you, can, you can feel that play, right? So don't stretch it so it's stiff and stuff. Just you feel like, oh, it wants to pull back and you're just holding it. So it's going to start vibrating. And you only think of your shoulder blade and the fingertip as you stretch. Right? And you see that ball of energy starting to form, starting to come out of nothingness between your palms. Take a deep breath. And slowly let it out. And take a regular breath. And then begin. Okay, breathing in, picking up the arms, holding the ball, extending. And folding back into the heart. Right here, everything is set. Number two, rolling. Imagine coming into your body, rising, flushing through the spine, the organs. And extending. And coming back and resetting at the heart. So relax and heart and number one. Okay, that was commencement. Single whip, turn to your right, same direction as me. Press and open, raising the palms, height of the face. Drop the elbows. Keep on turning. Just transition right into one saw. Look at the top hand. Drop the shoulder blade. Let the body turn. Stretch, stretch and open the palms. Feel those cables pulling the fingers up into the sky, whatever direction they are. Do one more time. Either look at the palm or look past the palm at the mountain top or the horizon. Feel the muscle pulling the spine back. Okay, come back to center. Turn a little bit to the left as you spiral back. Open and close and repeat on your left side, your left side. Turn and press and open and raise the palms. And then drop the left hand. And either look at the palm or look through the fingers or through the palm at the horizon. Drop the shoulders, drop the shoulder blade. 
away. Let the body turn up to 45 degrees. Come back to center. Turn a little bit to the right as you spiral back. Right into an open and close. Brushing the knee, the right side first. Turn right. Slide the right hand straight up. Breathing in, and drop the palm. And as you exhale, tap with the middle finger, tap the heart, and then palm the heart. And expand that energy out from your heart through the palm. Right, and then imagine you feeling both your heart and the other person's heart. Uh, take a breath. And as you exhale, drop the palms and keep on turning. Shift back into the movement and then 45 to your right. Slide your left hand up. Twist, twist left. Let the arms fold, cradle the ball. Parry right and then parry left with the palms washing through the forearm. Yeah. Learn to vibrate the palms, vibrate the fingers. Flip the hand over the cover. And keep on turning so they come outside of the right knee and breathe in and start to grab. And as you exhale, squeeze and turn so the right fist goes straight forward. And then release, wrist on wrist, right in the center, rolling back. Expand and gather, compress and lift the sternum. Double hand pushing mountain. Gently draw it back to the heart. Tilt the sternum up, inner smile. And then repeat on the ref, left side. Left side? <laughs> oh. Is that not enough coffee or too much coffee? <laughs> it just depends. <laughs> just depends on your perspective. <laughs> cool people are right here. Feel like you cradle, like you just cradling something. Here, and then twist, hold the ball, and then parry left. Let the palms wash through the forearms, through the arm, and parry right. Cover, turn back, flip the right hand over. The hands make a plus sign, right, or cross. Breathe in and start to grab. And as you exhale, squeeze the fist and turn. Right, let one fist rise and then release. Back to center, wrist on wrist. Drop the shoulder and elbow, expand. Gather, compress, lift the sternum, double palms. And draw it back to the heart. Okay. Repeat on the left side again. Brush the knee, so just turn and slide the hand right up by the ear. And start to turn that top hand forward, tap the center, palm the heart, right? Expand that heart energy out. Just take your time. Leisurely tie the coat. So fold. You're still holding with the left hand. The right hand circles up. Turn back to the front. Drop the elbow so palms are flat and start wiping down. Drop the shoulder and elbow. Come to the belly button and scoop the right palm up. Tuck the elbow in as you lift. Turn the waist as you push the palm out. Stretching the fingers and big spiral. Loosen the whole spine. Like you're just kind of shaking out the spine. And double palm and release. What side are we doing? Oh, that side. Sometimes you just enjoy the ending of that move and just totally forget where you are. Uh, leisurely tie the coat. The left hand circles up. Turn, flatten, drop the elbow and wipe. And turn the waist, fingertips, lift. Tuck the elbows in and turn the waist, extend, spiral. Double palm, right in front of the heart. Open and close. <coughs> okay, where are we? Fist under elbow. Turn and press. And then open. Raise the palms. And start dropping the right hand and turn the waist. And then the bottom hand starts to grab and you turn back and twist the fist up. And then keep on turning. Bring the arms in. Fist under elbow. Breathe in. 
And as you exhale, turn and push the fist straight out to the belly button and let it rise and then release. Lift and fold and turn to your right. Drop the left hand. That's called repulse monkey. Right, brush the knee, lift the sternum, and turn the palm center and keep on turning. The right hand washes down, flushes. The left fingertip taps the heart and cradles the heart and expand. And then keep on turning. Breathe in and out. Leisurely tie the coat, turn and fold. Left hand circles up. Turn your waist, turn the palms flat. Wipe down, turn the waist. Come into the belly button, turn the waist. Or turn the spine. Spiral. Drop the shoulders and arms, come to the heart. And just swivel the right hand and the left palm forward and release. And fist on the elbow on the left side. And turn and press and open and drop the left hand. Right away, drop the left hand and then turn the waist like you're turning and dialing. Then the bottom hand grabs and twist up. And you have to turn the body sideways, breathing in and exhale. Lift, fold, turn. Tap the heart. Lift the sternum. Keep on turning. Exhale. Last time. Keep on turning. Leisurely find the cold. Turn. Turn back to the front. Wiping down in the center. Come to the belly button. Drop the elbows. Lift. And turn your waist to the left. Now you push the palm out and then spiral. All that energy just coming from the fingertip. Slowly release. Take your time. Closing. Gently lift the sternum. Right here it feels full. So slowly you release the shoulders. Slowly you bring everything back to the center. Press one foot into the earth, sink into that hip joint. When the other leg releases, bring it back. Keep the upper body as relaxed as possible. Right? No tension in the upper body. Press and then release. Bring the hands up. Bring everything back to center. Right? Allow everything to quiet down. Do three times. Let everything go. Pull the heels up, breathe in, and release. Rest the palms on the center. <clears throat> put put your your left hand on the bottom. Right, just like it's going to cradle the belly button. Put your right hand on the top, just the fingers overlapping. Okay, so not full like this, just the fingers overlapping. Gently touch your fingertips. Okay. Tilt the sternum up, pull the head back, suspend it from above. Okay. Extend the legs out so the legs fall. Tip of the tongue on the roof of the mouth. Drop your shoulders. Let everything drop and release. Just gently holding that bubble. Open the throat. Relax the face. Any distractions, acknowledge it. And bring yourself back. Feel the lower belly expanding while the chest and shoulders are relaxed. Gently closing the eyes.
Build up that inner smile and from the heart, smile into you first. Imagine that smile projecting into you and then slowly expand that smile so it projects outwards. Relax all the facial muscles, the neck, the head. Open the throat when you breathe. Drop the shoulders and elbows. Project that heart energy outwards and project that heart energy outwards to anybody else's heart that you want to share it with. And imagine their heart smiling, imagine their heart absorbing that smile, your heart energy and both heart energies wake up. And then gently disconnect, but you still imagine their heart is open and smiling, and your heart is still open and smiling. But you don't need to, you don't need to keep it connected like that all the time. Right? So you work to just activate it for that person, right? and then you have to let go of that connection. And anytime you think of it, that connection will be reborn just by the intent. Okay, slowly open your eyes, bring your hands up and out. Rub your hands together. Yeah. Yeah, when they do healing, they have a, when you end the session, you have to disconnect, yeah? Otherwise, you become, you become that, um, oh, or they become the energy zombie, yeah? Because you forgot to disconnect that connection. <laughs> Yeah, has all these little rules and protocols to save yourself. Yeah. Warm up. Yeah. So in the beginning, you use really specific tools. And then after a while, you don't, as long as you're always doing that, you don't really need to do it. Yeah, it just kind of happens. Oh, bye-bye. Yeah, it just kind of happens. And sometimes, oh, I forgot. And you go run through the protocol and you're like, did I have to do it? Because you're just kind of building that into what you do, yeah? Oh, did you hear that? Sometimes they think all oh, my snap, crackle, and pops are so loud they're going to come out through the microphone. Yeah, you ever see those um, chiropractic videos? And they just pop like gunshots. And... And I always wonder, like, is that really good? <laughs> you know, actually, if you can release, you know, it's an indicator, right? So you feel like, oh, yeah, it released. But actually, if you could release that without creating that popping, it's the same thing. But we think, like, oh, the back has to crack and all oh, that sort of release. 
but I notice more, more and more after I finish the massage, less and less I have those adjustments. They're just kind of naturally coming up. But if you get those adjustments, okay, you should be having some kind of massage or some kind of warming of the, the muscles before. So at the minimum, before you walk into that chiropractic office, they should be putting you on what's called a spinalator, either massage chair or spinalator. The spinalator, you just on this table and there's this bar that's rolling and it's going up and down and up and down. So by the time you get into the chiropractic and you lie on their table, your muscles have relaxed, right? So then the adjustments can just go. Bah, 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 bah. But yeah, I, I hear stories or you see them right there. They just force it and. Bah! And like, yeah, and every so often it's going to cause, it's going to make it worse. Yeah. Or you want to go to chiropractors who have massage therapists in the office. And normally you're getting that massage, you want that massage before the chiropractor. Yeah. So then the chiropractor just goes, presses a little bit, right? And everything is ready to release. Yeah. I had one or two patients after the massage. They would stand up and because that helped them to release you. Yeah. They knew like, oh, it's ready to go. Yeah. Okay, you send everything up. Yeah. If you want to stand up and you want to do the slapping, right, for this, this is a good time to do that slapping. Right. You can loosen up the legs. Yeah. So, yeah, practice the squatting. Just think deep inside. Use use something safety. Right. Oh, you know what's really good too is the um, if you have the walkers. Oh, I love that because front side, right? Or I can put it outside. I can adjust it. Can adjust the height. Yeah, I've, I got walker at home, so I could do those. I, when I was doing the physical therapy, I was doing it more and more. And good self defense too. Yeah. <laughs> He has never thought about the walker self-defense, right? It's it's a physical barrier between you and that person, right? And you're holding on to it. And most of them are aluminum, so you can pick them up. <laughs> right? You can pick them up. Yeah, they reach for you, pretend you're driving car. Just don't have to hit them, just twist. <laughs> and if they grab the walker, you're still holding on. They're not grabbing you, right? <laughs> All right, thank you everybody. Yeah, take it.